Right now, taxpayers are being forced to pay the salaries of ministers chosen by the federal government. It is, as near as I can tell, the most egregious violation of church-state separation in America's history. And yet, when you point it out to people, even many non-religious people's response is, what's wrong with that? They watch the Trump administration wipe their collective ass with the First Amendment and don't understand why that's a problem. After all, if the PPP is there to protect people's paychecks, shouldn't it protect the paychecks of ministers, too? They need to eat. Wouldn't it, in fact, be discriminatory to exclude them? And the fact that this counter argument is so widespread or that it has any acceptance whatsoever outside of Protestant Christianity is a real testament to what a great job they've done redefining the concept of religious liberty over the last couple of decades. The goal there has always been twofold, right? They want to cement the new definition, which suggests that religious liberty means the right to break laws your religion doesn't like because that affords them the ability to break the laws that they don't like. But as a bonus, they also get to get rid of that pesky old definition that gave Muslims and Jews all the same rights that they had. Their definitional perversion has taken such deep root in our country that when you point out that forcing me to pay some pastor's salary is a violation of my religious liberty, you get baffled responses from people who don't understand how a person can even have religious liberty if they don't have religion. And let's face it, it's getting harder and harder to simply cite the Constitution now that the body tasked with interpreting that document has agreed to deliberately misunderstand that part of it. According to this Supreme Court, it isn't even unconstitutional to do that. Now, luckily for us, the fact that our entire fucking system of government is founded on this principle isn't the only thing we have going for us in this debate. So when my recourse to the clear intent of the framers of the Constitution is blocked off, I can always point things out like discrimination. Right, right. If we can only save a limited number of jobs, a basic sense of fairness suggests that we save the jobs that aren't legally allowed to discriminate. I mean, set aside how fucked up it is that such a category even exists. But if it's everybody's money we're spending, we should focus on the job where qualifications don't include things like must have a penis, must be straight, can't be pregnant out of wedlock or must agree never to believe in evolution. Of course, not everybody is motivated by limiting discrimination, and the people who take that the least seriously tend to gravitate towards the other side of this argument. So even that point isn't the silver bullet that it should be. So if you find yourself in need of an argument against churches getting PPP loans and other government subsidies, and you're dealing with one of those assholes that selectively lacks empathy when it helps them win an argument, might I suggest one that requires no emotional stake whatsoever? From a purely logical perspective, churches are the least useful fucking business we could possibly invest our money in. I mean, consider this. Like, most businesses exist somewhere along a supply line. Investing in, for example, a car manufacturer also necessarily invests in all the factories that make their various parts, the people who ship those parts, the dealerships who sell the cars ad infinitum. And not only that, but at the end of the day, you end up with cars. You know, they have their own economic value. They get people places. This isn't universally true of all businesses, of course. I mean, there are plenty of services like lawyers and accountants that exist outside of those supply lines or more or less outside of them, but they're still serving some vital function that allows all these other businesses to operate. So an investment in virtually any business is, to some degree, an investment in the economy as a whole. But this is less true for churches than it is for any other fucking thing. What ancillary business would be unable to operate without churches? What supplier would have to shutter their warehouse? What final product would we have less of? I mean, to be fair, it's not like churches don't contribute at all to the economy, right? Like, just think of all the lawyers and accountants the Catholic Church needs to pay to stand between their victims and compensation. And just by the merit of being a building that exists in space time, they're going to require a certain amount of maintenance and upkeep. But even here, they cheat the economy wherever they can. There is no other category of business more likely to fucking guilt somebody into doing their maintenance for free or at some drastically reduced rate. From an economic perspective, churches are a black fucking hole, even when you set aside the lack of taxation, right? If we're just measuring this by economic impact, every dollar in a collection plate would be better off in a crack house. Even if they weren't constitutionally excluded from government funding, they should be blast in line, at least based solely on logic. Of course, the religious folks, and especially the leaders standing downwind from this windfall, would argue that houses of worship do serve a function, 
right? They'll talk all about stuff like spiritual well-being and the power of worship and other stuff equally unmeasurable and undefinable, right? They'll say they're offering guidance. They'll wave their charitable work in your face as though there weren't secular charities that do the same thing without hiding their finances behind legal loopholes. They'll point out some of the ministers receiving money are teachers in religious schools and stuff, though they probably won't mention the fact that that distinction only exists to protect their bigotry. And just in case anybody's forgetting Econ 101, I should emphasize that it's not just that this money is being wasted on churches, it's that it's not being spent elsewhere. Look, if if churches serve a function, then let their fucking parishioners support them. I'm even willing to give their parishioners my tax money knowing they're going to spend it on church. Right. Morally speaking, that puts me way ahead of religious employers providing contraceptive care, doesn't it? But that's where my obligation should end. If churches want to survive, let them do some damn thing worth paying for.